Hey guys, it's Jack Pumpkinton here, and today is an unboxing. It's been a while since I've done one, because I haven't bought a lot of gear lately. Um, but this is going to go with an announcement on something that I'm working on in my new project, kind of. Kind of new, but unboxing first. Actually, uh, my buddy Cody, the guy who I won that pedal off of in a raffle, was selling these and I bought them from him and it seemed like a pretty good deal Jeez. and I'm very excited to use these because uh, one I've had in a guitar before that kind of spoils what they are but the other one I have not I like that he used his own, oh no, this isn't his brand. I thought this was his brand, because he has his own brand of stuff. Huh. He just, probably the only box he had lying around. Oh, they're so pretty. So we have a Seymour Duncan neck. This is a 59. Basically, Seymour Duncan's PAF and a DiMarzio 30th anniversary PAF. So, these, I hope that cable's long enough in the neck. The bridge definitely is. Let's see how long the next cable is. It should be. But these guitars, yeah, that'll definitely be long enough. These pickups, yeah, are going into my um 1979 gibson explorer about not a year ago about maybe like nah eight 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 or nine months ago i tore it apart and sanded a little bit of the paint off because as you guys who have been on the channel long enough to see the original video i haven't played on it in a while either beforehand um no, my 79 Explorer is my pride and joy of guitars that I own, but it, uh, in its life, someone decided to take a router and uh, put a Floyd, well, I don't think it was an actual Floyd, I think it was um, a Kaler bridge on it, put a Kaler on it, and that is something that I've never liked on that guitar, obviously. I've always wanted to get it fixed. And finally, after a long time, it's getting fixed. It's actually at my dad's right now. Um, I was over there, not yesterday, but two days ago. Put my knife away before I forget. And uh, <laughs> this is actually my birthday present. It's actually a really cool knife uh, from him because my birthday's in three weeks. Oh no, my birthday is in a month. Um, a month from when this video will come out, so tomorrow. But he is working on the Explorer. He's uh, we already cut the wood out and stuff. Um, he was just sanding it down to get it in the slot correctly, and so that's going to be fixed. Next, after that, it's going to go to my buddy Jeremy, um, who's a really good guy, good friend of mine who is going to not only be repainting it, uh, we're going to be working on it together, but he's kind of like the teacher, I'm just the student learning. Um, he's going to be painting the guitar for me and then wiring it with these pickups, which I'm very excited to have in this guitar. And this is probably going to be my main guitar um, in, the, in my band. Um, it's going to be the perfect sound. It's... Probably the best playing guitar I've ever played in my life because it's just, I don't know. It was made here in Michigan, uh, one of the last ones before Gibson shut down the factory. It's probably one of the very few Gibsons I will still play and be okay with because it's before their quality went down, like really bad. I mean, it's from 79. And also, it's kind of like an interesting story. 
on how this guitar came about. I don't think I actually talked about this in the original review I posted five years ago, I think. Four or five years ago on this guitar. Which I will do an update review on it when it's done. Um, this guitar belonged. Originally that guitar actually belonged to my buddy Jeremy. The one who's going to paint it and rewire it for me. Um, he tried to sell it to me back when I was actually in college about five or six years ago. Um, however, I just couldn't get the funds at the time. And I had wound up with a Gibson SG Junior, not Junior, but SGJ. It was a 2014. And uh, it was really cool. And I traded it for the Explorer. Um, but the Explorer was just the husk and a bunch of parts that I put together eventually. Sorry, that's the uh, Luna, my cat. Um, and Jer Jeremy actually helped me wire it back up back then. And we had, had it working and then it went to a certain business that I will not name for reasons of, I don't want to get sued. Uh, I will say this, it's not Guitar Center. And um, ever since then, because I had a pickup put into it, I had a Bill Lawrence put into the bridge position, it never worked again properly. The neck pickup was never responsive after that. And um, I could have just had it rewired. But the neck pickup was just a cheap pickup. It wasn't nothing, anything special. So I really didn't care, and uh, the paint was permanently damaged when that happened. Um, through a long story that I won't go into now, the paint was basically destroyed, and it was the original paint um, from factory because of the, the actions of this business. And I won't go to that business and haven't gone to that business since. And that's about four or five years ago from now. Um, and I, I tell anyone who asks me about it not to go there. Um, because I don't trust them now. Like I said, this is not a guitar that was worth a ton of money. Yes, it is a 79 Gibson Explorer. But it, A, was not all original. B, it has a headstock repair. C, it also had that big hole in the back from someone rotting it. Obviously, this is not worth the ten grand that a seventy nine. I don't know what they're actually worth, but what a seventy nine Explorer is probably worth. This is a eight hundred dollar five five eight hundred dollar like really roughed up Explorer was worth. Obviously, getting it repaired and stuff is going to bring up the value, but this is not a guitar I plan on ever selling. I sold it once to my grandpa. <laughs> Who then we worked out a trade that I got it back. But like I said, um, <laughs> it's been in need of this for a long time. You can actually go watch the original video and you can see the shape it was in when I first got it too. It was still pretty rough. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, new tuners because I lost one of the tuners I had. And probably new electronics. Um, just... I want both pickups to obviously work, um, but basically I'm going to make this guitar look and sound as good as I and my friends and my father can, and uh, yeah, it's it's not going to be as much as if I were to take it to, like, say, Sweetwater or a, another reputable luthier. Um, my buddy Jeremy is really good at what he has done. And my dad is pretty good as well. <laughs> I've seen him like cut out some really cool bodies and stuff. And he's, I mean, he's been a woodworker and a metal shop worker longer than I've been alive. So something as simple as cut a square about this big and fill in a couple posts and then, or post size holes and then re-drill them correctly. It's, it's, it's a cinch for him. So I'm really excited to have this guitar back. I'm hoping to have it back in about a month done wired painted everything we'll see um i should be getting it back from my dad this time next week hopefully um i'm hoping friday because saturday i have a show um but it is what it is 
and then you know get it painted and then wire it up and hopefully by the show that's the day after my birthday that we have i can take that and use that on stage not that any of my other guitars aren't good for that because they all are it's just this is like a it's it's a cool guitar has a lot of cool history and b i mean explorers just look awesome so this is something i've just wanted to like rant about not rant but talk about um which does tie into friday's video which is going to be my it, my problem with Gibson right now, and why I'm refusing, excluding the Explorer, to play any real any Gibson. So, that's a complete opinion piece. If you don't want to watch it, I completely understand. But anyway, guys, this is Jack Punkington signing out. Peace.